right, so um, I'm going to be giving a talk about uh, tuning the OTEL collector performance through profiling. Uh, this is specifically about some of the work I've been doing using uh, PProf built into Go to uh, make some minor improvements or analyze some performance problems with the open telemetry collector. Uh, this is sort of a two-pronged talk. You know, one of it is to sort of build excitement for the profiling signal in general if you're not familiar with it, but also to show that these tools already exist to start getting into profiling if you're interested. Uh, it's all very accessible. Uh, so I'm Braden Keynes. Uh, you might know me through GitHub as Braden K, or if you're a big meanie head, Braydonk. Uh, I work on the Open Telemetry Collector and Semantic Conventions, mainly focused on uh, system metrics, since it's a we, we heavily use it on the Google Cloud Ops Agent, which is uh, my team's tool. Um, so I'm a code owner on the host metrics receiver, and I'm a member of the System Metrics Semantic Conventions Working Group. Uh, I'm going to start by grossly oversimplifying what a profile is to sort of uh, explain it if you've never heard of it. This is the analogy that sort of cracked it for me. Um, if you think of a metric, um, usually it is a time series data point. It's a measurement of something at a period, at like a time stamp, at a period of time. If you map that data over a span of time, you can start to paint a nice picture of what was going on with that measurement over that span of time. Uh, the way I like to think of profiling is kind of like that, except instead of a measurement taken at a period of time, it's a measurement taken at a location in a program. And when you paint that over all the locations available to the program, you can start to paint a picture of what your program was doing with the measurement you're taking, whether that be CPU or memory based. Um, these are some of the uh, profiling, uh, <laughs> some, some of the profiling formats you might be familiar with. My first time using profiling was actually uh, with a call grind. This is a tool under Valgrind. I had no idea what any of it meant. Uh, a PProf is the format I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, and OTEL profiles are uh, an extension of PProf. You know, the, the current version two proposal of the data model is actually just a straight extension of PProf. It's backwards compatible with the old format. Um, the reason I'm going to be talking about PFROF today um, mainly is that, for one thing, it has uh, support for multiple types of signal, signals and measurements. Uh, you can call grind, for example, is focused specifically on CPU profiling, and uh, you know, kernel, Linux kernel perf is another popular one that's very focused on the CPU side of things, but PFROF does both, and we're going to be looking at both today. Um, it, and uh, I already mentioned that, whoops. Uh, but yes, it's the format that OTEL profiles are based off of. Um, the tools to utilize it are actually built right into Go, which the OpenTelemetry collector is written in, or you might have applications written in it as well. Uh, and I'm going to be demonstrating a little bit of that today as well. Uh, to use PProf with the OTEL collector, uh, you can use the uh, PProf extension. Um, this automatically configures the stuff that you would need to manually configure yourself, which is not all that hard, really, but it's even more convenient that it's built in. Uh, this will actually spin up a PProf server that you can go query yourself with the PProf tool to get a profile at a specific time, get a specific type of profile at a certain time. Uh, you, you do that with this command. Uh, if you have Go installed, this is already here. You don't have to do any extra Go install or anything like that. It's actually built into the installation. Um, and then that's it. Sort of, you have to install GraphViz to get the graphs and stuff. But for the most part, this is it. Uh, and this is all you need to do to get started with it. Uh, so I'm going to be looking at a couple of case studies. And because I know I'm playing us into the break and everybody's excited for coffee, I'm going to try and be a little bit brief with it. But I will try and hopefully get all the information we need out of it. This uh, issue came to my attention uh, when I was talking internally about Prometheus receiver performance stuff that I was trying to improve. And this issue opened by Enrique, who you might, be, you might know him from his uh, YouTube channel, Is It Observable? Uh, he was doing some uh, performance testing of different Prometheus scrapers, and he was having issues with the Prometheus receiver doing what it, it looked like it was leaking memory, because it was, the memory was constantly growing over time. Uh, so I opened up PProf to try and get some information. And oops, there we go. Uh, when you open up. Uh, the PProf web UI, this is sort of what you get. Um, the default view here is a graph, which is um, pretty good for, for memory, maybe not so much for CPU profiles, but it's a pretty good view for memory. You can sort of see that, oh, geez, this is going to be tough because I'm on a lower resolution. Uh, but you can sort of see what, where different allocations are happening and where different spots are holding memory. 
Uh, for today, we're actually gonna be looking specifically at the flame graph visualization. Um, oh, it's so zoomed in, this is gonna be fun. Uh, this, what I had Enrique do was to take profiles at every hour over a period of time since I couldn't really replicate his setup so well. So it's sort of like budget continuous profiling. Um, this first profile we're seeing, we're working with half a gig of heap space. When you look at a pprof profile, you're specifically looking at the, the heap. There is more memory that ends up getting used if you read the number from your system versus the profile, you're gonna get a different number because the heap is only one part of the memory map. But it is important for when we're talking about memory leaks because memory leaks are like the, the region of memory that's growing is going to be the heap usually. Um, if we look at this for an issue called Prometheus receiver memory leak, this spot where the Prometheus receiver is actually allocating memory is really not that big, and I was a bit surprised by that, but this is pretty early in the measurement. The biggest thing that we see right now is actually the cumulative to delta processor. Uh, this works by storing an original point of, of the metric to do a delta calculation against, because that's how uh, delta metrics work. So for the first profile early on in the run, we kind of expect that this would be relatively large if you're doing a lot of metrics, if you're converting a lot of metrics, there needs to be for each metric identity, you know, an original point to calculate against. So maybe that's okay for the first profile, but I kind of hoped that, what, what, what I would expect to see is in the later profile, I have another profile from like five hours later, and that this region of memory from the Prometheus receiver, I would expect to see it grow. Um, if we go and look at the, from five hours later, it has grown quite a bit. We're up to two and a half gigs of heap space, but the shape is basically the same. The cumulative to delta processor uh, is still taking up the most, and the numbers themselves have continued to grow. Um, and w when I thought I had more time, I was gonna take on us all on an adventure through how this all works in the cumulative to delta processor, but we don't have time. So basically what this, what this led me to believe is that there are some manner of cardinality leakage um, this sync map loader store, this map is a storage of uh, different metric identities where it's like the name, the labels, and the label values so that every unique time series has its own original data point stored. Um, this region of memory continues to grow and even through, uh, through every profile, this is consistently the one that was growing, which led me to believe that one of the metric pipelines there has some manner of cardinality leakage. Um, but the, the Prometheus endpoints he was scraping were popular like community exporters, and I don't really know which one is the culprit. We haven't figured that out yet, um, but there is a feature in the cumulative to delta processor that will evict old entries if it hasn't seen it in a certain amount of time. So I, I am having him configure that to hopefully see that, that region of memory not grow too much if we have cardinality leakage in one of the pipelines. But that's a good lesson about using cumulative to delta. Make sure you're not leaking cardinality too much because this can, this can happen, or at least make sure you configure the cache eviction. Um, whoops, that's the wrong one. The second case study that we're gonna be looking at, um, I'm a host metrics code owner, um, and one of the crusades that I've been on is to make process metric collection more efficient because process metrics are very high cardinality and to get a lot of the information you need, you need to make system calls and that's very expensive. Uh, and we had these two issues. We're only gonna be looking at one of them today. I don't have time. If you wanna talk about the first one where uh, we were looking at a uh, host metrics receiver on Linux, uh, the fix for that has actually landed. So if you wanna talk about it, come find me after. Um, but I'm gonna be looking at the slightly more interesting one, which is the second issue related to uh, process scraping on Windows. Uh, of course, the challenge of the host metrics receiver is that the, the, a lot of the process metrics are the same or they're across platforms, but the implementation of how you get them is completely different. Uh, so we're, I'm going to look at two profiles. This first one um, is this, so now we're into CPU profiles. The last one was a memory profile. This is a uh, CPU profile of one scrape. I, I time, you, when you take a CPU profile, you time it over a certain amount of time uh, and pre will sample at a certain rate for events uh, and you can get the 740 milliseconds we see here, that is how much on CPU work was sampled. Uh, and this is representative of one process scrape. Scrapes all the processes on the system, records all the metrics for it, and that usually happens on an interval. It was happening on an interval but of about a minute in this case and I had sampled for 40 seconds. So that's what we're looking at. Um, beware the jump scare, uh, the width of these 
uh, of each section is how much, like what proportion of the of the work essentially was being taken here. And because I'm, I'm a little squished because of the zoom in, you can't see, but 88% of time was spent getting the parent process ID for every process in the scrape. And when I saw this, I near jumped out of my chair because uh, it really shouldn't be that ridiculous. Uh, but it turns out with the Win32 API, this call, Create Tool Help 32 Snapshot, is as far as I can see and as far as the GoPS util maintainers can see, the best way to get the parent process ID for a process. But this snapshot snaps tons and tons of information, including heap and thread space for the entire process. And it's doing this for every process. Uh, so that is extremely expensive. Uh, and I was on a hunt for a better way to do it. Um, there's a lot of Microsoft people here, so they're gonna kind of know this part. Um, but the, the best other way that I can see to get uh, the parent process ID was through the Windows Management Interface. Uh, it has a SQL query type of language where you can query information about the system and specifically about processes. And I'm already using it on an old metric that I implemented to get the process uh, handles. Uh, process, the handles belonging to a process, getting that information, the only really good way I could see in the Win32 API was using an unsupported NT query system information, query process information, I forget what it's called. But it's an unsupported Win32 API and the, we weren't really super excited about using that. Uh, so I started using the Windows management interface to query, get the information for every process in one query and then sort of organize that information as we're scraping process, uh, scrape, doing this get process metadata work. Uh, and that led to this second profile of the new version that I came up with. Um, and we are down to uh, only 220 milliseconds of work, roughly. And we cut quite a bit of work out of a single scrape uh, by doing this in a WMI query. Uh, the query is the most expensive part of the process scrape still. Um, but this actually has a sort of a backdoor improvement too, which is if you use the process.handle metric already, if you've enabled that, um, then the information all comes in one query and it's not more expensive to get that second metric. So this is a pretty good improvement. The PR for it is open. I haven't got it merged yet, but I'm hoping we can get that merged. Um, and the other thing that I did was I made it so that if you disable the parent PID, like if you just don't really care about that resource attribute, uh, you can delete it and essentially what you get is just, um, let's see, it was, we ignore this. Yeah, you get down to 90 milliseconds. So if you don't, if you don't want the parent PID in your scraping processes on Windows, you don't care about that, then you can get much more efficient just by disabling it after the PR is merged. Hopefully that will get merged soon. Um, so I'm pretty close to being out of time, I'm sure. Uh, so I'm just gonna go quickly through sort of some of the conclusions we come here. Uh, mainly, the main thing I wanna take away is that like this isn't magic, you know, anybody has the power to understand this, if I have the power to understand this, uh, and the tools are readily available to everyone. So if you're an hotel collector developer, or really if you're in any language, there's probably similar solutions for this. You know, we don't have to wait for hotel profiling to be ready to start solving some of the problems that profiling's good at. Um, and if you have, a, you know, if you have a collector, even if you're not a developer of the collector, but you want to understand a little bit more about what your collector's doing, or you want to, you know, report a GitHub issue, uh, using the pprof extension and sort of understanding how to like show sc either show screenshots or send profiles along to maintainers, that stuff is very useful. Um, the profiling is in this case. In this case, I was looking at individual problems. You know, I was trying to target specific specific issues at specific times manually taking profiles, but. There are a lot of solutions out there for continuous profiling. You know, I tried to focus this talk only on generic solutions, not nothing vendor specific, but lots of vendors have lots of uh, to great tools for, you know, even better flame graph views, uh, continuous profiling over time. So if you wanna look at it, at it use, basically you can use it a lot like tracing, uh, but get, you know, more granular information about your program instead of like about your whole system. Um, and, just, I'm excited for hotel profiling. Basically, that's the, that's the end of it. I'm really excited for this to sort of uh, proliferate through other tooling and so that we can use this, the profiling standard, but be able to tool it the same way across different languages. I think that's very exciting. Uh, that's everything I got, and uh, I don't know if there's time for questions if we're on break, but you can come find me afterwards. Thanks.